the Dallas Mavericks. Introduced to the NBA during the 1980-81 to 81 season. Got off to a pretty solid start, making the playoffs six times in their first 10 years of existence. And even making it to the conference finals in 88. But after trading away their star Mark Aguirre, the team struggled. Honestly, struggled is putting it lightly. They were downright horrendous. The peak of their atrocity came in the 92 to 93 season where they won a whopping 11 games. 11 games, which at the time was the second worst season ever. This team was straight ass and they would continue to suck for a few more years until the night of the 98 draft where their fortunes would change. They held the sixth pick and drafted Robert Tractor Trailer, who had a career average of five and four. You blew it! But somehow, in a lucky change of fate, the Milwaukee Bucks, who had the ninth pick, wanted the tractor. So they made a deal with the Mavericks, where the Mavericks sent away the trailer in exchange for Pat Garrity and the Bucks' newly acquired ninth pick, who happened to be Dirk Nowitzki, aka German Jesus. Dirk had a rough rookie season, only putting up eight points on 40% shooting from the field. But year two and three, he would see huge improvement, jumping up to 17 points per game, then up to 22 points a game the next year, where the team made a second round playoff appearance and things were looking up. In 2003, Dirk and his teammates Michael Finley and Steve Nash would leave the Mavs all the way to the conference finals, but would lose to the Spurs in six games. After a disappointing first round loss the following year, Steve Nash would leave the Phoenix in free agency where he would blossom into a two-time MVP. During the 05-06 season, due to the signing of Jason Terry and the emergence of Josh Howard, the Mavs would finally get over the hump and make it all the way to the finals where they would face Dwayne Wade, Shaq, and the Miami Heat. The Mavs would jump to a 2-0 lead, but would lose four straight behind a historic Michael Jordan-esque performance from Dwayne Wade, where he averaged 35 points a game and almost three steals. While Dirk, on the other hand, struggled, shooting under 40% from the field while scoring below his season average. The next season, the Mavericks would run it back and with great success. They would win 67 games, securing the one seed. Josh Howard would get his one and only all-star appearance. Dirk would put up great numbers once again on 50, 40, 90 splits, and the team looked prime for another finals run. But in round one, they would face a red-hot eight-seeded Warriors team and lose in six, where once again, Dirk failed to play well when it mattered most, averaging less than 20 points per game and shooting less than 40% from the field. He wasn't even the top scorer on his team in this series. Even more embarrassingly, he would win the MVP and have to accept his award after already being knocked out of the playoffs. At this point in time, he had developed the reputation as being a playoff choker, which is not something you want. And for the following three years, the Mavericks appeared emotionally damaged from the Warriors series, only getting out of the first round one time. And with every year going by and Dirk getting older, it seemed less and less likely that this all-time talent would win a championship. But now we enter the 2010-11 season. LeBron has left Cleveland to join up with Dirk's old rival, Dwayne Wade in Miami, forming a super team. Dirk, now 32, finds himself the lone star on an older team with a bunch of guys now out of their prime, to put it lightly, including Karan Butler, Heja Stojakovic, Sean Marion, and drunk driving enthusiast Jason Kidd. They still had Jason Terry and had newly acquired defensive presence Tyson Chandler playing the five. A good team, but in comparison to the rest of the contenders at the time, such as the Lakers, Heat, Spurs, and Celtics, contention didn't seem realistic. The power rankings didn't really like them either, viewing them as a likely first round or second round exit like usual. Through their first 10 games, they were solid, going seven and three. And the rest of the season played out much of the same. They were really good, but not great, winning 57 games and claiming the three seed, ranking eighth in both offense and defensive ratings. In the playoffs round one, they would find themselves matched up against a Trailblazers team, helmed by LaMarcus Aldridge and a declining Gerald Wallace. Game one in Dallas, they would win by eight, with 24 of their points coming from Mr. DUI. They would also win game two. Portland would tie up the series, winning both games three and four with help from post-injury Brandon Roy. Then Dallas would win both games five and six to close Portland out. 
Even now in round two, no one was turning heads. They beat a six-seeded Portland team. So what? Now they faced a real challenge. Matched with Kobe and the Lakers who were coming off two straight titles and were looking to add a third to complete the three-peat. Game one in LA. Lakers held a seven-point lead going into the fourth, but the Mavs would turn up defensively. And with 25 seconds left with the Lakers up one, Kobe would drive and throw an ill-advised pass, which would get stolen by Jason Terry. Bald man would then inbound the ball to Dirk, who would be fouled immediately by an overactive Gasol. And with the second foul in the final two minutes, Dirk would go to the stripe and knock down both. The Lakers would call a timeout after the initial inbound where Kobe would be fouled. Now with 8.8 .8 seconds left, the ball would be inbounded to Gasol, who tried running a handoff to Kobe. But miraculously, instead of assaulting Gasol, Kidd would just rob him on an attempted handoff. And the Lakers would be forced to foul him with 3.1 seconds left. He would miss the first, then make the second. And with one last chance to be the hero, Kobe would run around a Bynum screen, take a fading three over the drunk, which he would miss. Dallas would take game one thanks to great defense and 11 fourth quarter points from Dirk. Game two. Dallas would take an early first quarter lead and never look back, slowly expanding the lead until they would end up winning by 12. The Dallas defense was showing up and every Laker besides Kobe was struggling. Now up 2-0, going back to Dallas for game three. The Lakers needed a victory if they wanted any chance of staying alive. And once again, going into the fourth quarter, the Lakers were up. And with 3.56 left, down six, Dirk would have the ball in the post and drive on Gasol, finding Peja in the corner who would knock down the open three. Kobe would drive on the bald kid, pulling up for a midi. Dirk would rotate over, forcing him to pass out of the shot to Gasol, who had his back turned, expecting a shot. Drunk Mr. Clean would grab it. Kobe uncharacteristically would foul him while Dallas was in the bonus, and he would go to the line and knock down both. Now down just one with 246 left, Dirk receives it in the post, turns and drives on Gasol, pump fakes, gets both him and Bynum in the air, drawing the foul. He would knock them both down and take a one point lead. Derek Fisher will get a handoff from Andrew Bynum, drive and bank in the floater to take the lead. Now in the high post, Dirk would draw a double from Kobe, kicking it to an open Johnny Sins. Sins then found Jason Terry for an open three in the corner to take the lead once again. With 1.45 remaining, Odom would face up Stoyakovic and flip in a spinning left-handed shot, tying it up. Once again, Dirk gets it with Gasol on him, drives left stops then flips it in with his left hand the following possession the Mavs would finally get a stop Peja would be forced to take a tough contested midi miss the ball would go off the fingertips of Gasol and Terry would save it after wasting more clock Terry would get it and be stupidly fouled by Fisher he would hit both free throws to put the Mavs up by four then after a Laker turnover some more Mavs free throws they had done it once again they were now up 3-0 against the two-time defending champions. And the series seemed basically over. And by halftime of game four, it was. With the Mavs up 24 points. They finished the Lakers off in brutal fashion with a 122-86 win. And behind great defense and the role players showing up when it mattered. And of course, Dirk. The Mavs had swept the back-to-back -back defending champions and stopped Kobe at his last real chance of getting his sixth ring and tying Jordan. But they were only halfway to the promised land. Now in the conference finals, they were up against a young Thunder team that looked legit after being the Grizzlies in seven. Led by two 22-year-olds in the hyper-athletic Russell Westbrook and already unguardable Kevin Durant. Game one after being down by seven after the first, the Mavericks would beat the Thunder by 14 in the second quarter and would never let up, taking game one. Led by Dirk dropping 48 and taking and making 24 free throws. Game two, with 6.59 left in the fourth, the Mavericks would be down one, but would never get any closer with the Thunder winning by six to even the series. Now going to OKC for game three, the Mavs would lead by 16 at halftime with KD and Westbrook struggling. In the fourth though, the duo would finally get it going, but it was little too late, with the Mavs winning by six. In a game where pretty much everybody struggled, including Dirk. Now in game four, in a do or die game for the Thunder, after a Westbrook jumper that put the Thunder up by 10 with only 2.33 left in the fourth, 
and the game looking over, Dirk would become German Jesus. Mr. Clean finds Dirk to instantly hit a contested three over Nick Carlson. Westbrook would get fouled, but would miss both free throws, and Dirk would get it once again. He pump fakes, then shoots, trying to draw a foul, but instead gets no foul and makes a ridiculous circus shot. Westbrook would miss on the Thunder's next trip. The ball would of course go to Dirk, where he would work Carlson closer to the bucket and score off his signature one-legged fadeaway, making it a one-score game. Westbrook would brick another contested mid-range shot for the Thunder. Marion would get fouled on the rebound and go one of two from the line, making it a two-point game. Durant would drive finding Tabo Cephalosa for a surprisingly good look from three, but a late closeout from Jason Terry would complicate things, forcing a miss. The bald kid would try to find Dirk for the last shot, but Dirk would be fouled before even receiving the ball. He would go to the line and sink both free throws to tie it up. Now with no momentum and trying to avoid overtime, Westbrook would get the inbound, then pass it to Durant, who would get stuffed by Marion trying to force up a super deep three. The Mavs would not get a last shot up, but now with all the momentum, they would dominate in overtime allowing only four points in the five minute period to take game four. Dirk would end the game with another 40 piece and now all the Mavs needed was one more game. Going back to Dallas for game five, it ended up being another close one. With 124 left in the fourth and the Mavs down by one, Dirk would run through a double screen and get an open look for three, but miss. Westbrook would nearly secure the rebound, but Chandler also going for the rebound would make it difficult, causing him to lose the ball. The Mavs would secure it and cycle it around until they found Dirk once again, who would drain the three this time, redeeming himself. Eric Maynard would miss on the next trip down, leading to Nick Carlson being trapped on the baseline, causing him to throw the ball away. Marion would end up with it, running the break, and would dunk it home, getting fouled from behind by Durant. He would make the free throw, putting the Mavs up by four. Westbrook would drive, draw on a foul, and would make both free throws. Now up two with 39 seconds left, Dallas looked to ice it. They would waste some clock, then go to their closer, who would drive, spin, and take a tough fader that would come up short. Marion would jump up for the board, tipping it right into the hands of the bald kid, who would give it right back to Dirk to be fouled. He would make them both. Now down four, the game was basically over for the Thunder with 13 seconds left. Durant would force up a three, then Harden would give it a try. The buzzer would sound and Dallas was going back to the NBA Finals. Dirk absolutely dominated this series, averaging 32 points a game on 56% shooting from the field. But now in the other conference came their ultimate test. The Miami Heat, who appeared even stronger than when these teams last matched up in 06. Now led by Wade and LeBron James, who was hungry for his first championship with Chris Bosh as their third dude. This team cruised through the playoffs, beating every team they faced in only five games. In game one in Miami, things continued looking great for the Heat. The game was close until the fourth, where the Heat pulled away thanks to a collective effort from LeBron, Wade, and Bosh, as well as great defense, which led to a subpar shooting night from Dirk. In game two, things were looking rough once again for the Mavericks. Being down 15 with only 6.29 remaining, but you can never count these Mavericks out. After starting 1 of 11 in the 4th, they would start rolling, with Dirk finding Jason Terry for an open mid-range jumper. After getting a stop, Kid would find Terry cherry picking. Wow, that was a tongue twister. Then after two more stops and some Terry free throws, Marion would drive on LeBron and score a layup. Finally, the Heat would end their scoring drought with some LeBron free throws, but the drought would start right back up again. After a Kid 3, LeBron would miss. Then Terry would hit a tough mid-range jumper over Chalmers. Bosch turned it over. Terry drew a double team due to his takeover, but they would mistakenly leave Dirk wide open. Now it was only a two-point game. After a few misses from both sides, Haslam would turn it over, leading to a three-on-one fast break with Dirk finishing with the layup. The Heat had completely choked away their lead, and now it was all tied up. After a Heat timeout with nothing going, Wade would try contested step back three. Dirk would get the rebound, and on their trip down, he would get an off ball screen from Chandler, get a fantastic look from three to take the lead. The Heat would finally wake up with LeBron finding Chalmers for a wide open three on the inbound to tie it up. Dallas would then call timeout. 
After wasting clock, Dirk would get it with 10 seconds to go against Bosch. He would spin and drive past him to finish with his left hand over the outstretched arm of Joel Anthony to once again take the lead. And with no timeouts and 3.6 seconds left, LeBron would run up the court to find Wade for a one-legged running deep three, which he would miss. Dallas had won their most impressive game yet, but game three ended up being another close one. With the Mavs down two with two minutes left, Dirk would get it against Haslam, making a tough fading shot to tie it. Both teams would miss, and with 47 seconds left, Wade would be doubled, finding LeBron, who would find Bosch for a wide open jumper. Now down, the ball would go to Dirk, who tried another fading jumper, but he would get doubled, causing him to pass out of the shot that would go out of bounds. The Heat trying to end it would go to LeBron for a tough three at the end of the shot clock, and Dallas would have another chance with 4.4 seconds, where once again, they went to Dirk. He tried another fade away and missed again, and Miami would take game three. And now game four became a must win for the Mavericks. And to make things even more difficult, it was reported before game four that Dirk had the flu and a temperature of 102. But he would play and throughout the game you could see him struggling. And it definitely reflected in his play, only having 11 points going into the fourth. And yet again, it was low scoring and tight. Pause. And Dallas once again would be all the way down by nine with 10 minutes. Jason Terry would score two straight buckets. Wade would get a rebound off an air ball and float in the putback. Dirk would turn and drive on Haslam to score. Wade drives hard, bumping Dirk to put it in the bucket. Dirk would sink two free throws. Then Chandler lays it in off a Jason Terry miss. Chandler then steals it from Bosch. Terry runs the floor and gets an easy layup to take the lead. Chandler would go one of two from the line on the next possession to make it a two point lead. Then Dallas would join the Heat on their scoring drought with neither team scoring for two minutes. Dirk would sink two free throws. Then Bosch would finally end the Heat's five and a half minute scoring drought with two free throws of his own. Now with under a minute left, LeBron finds Wade all the way down the court who draws a foul going for a layup. He would go one of two at the line making it a one point game. Dirk gets it with 24 seconds, drives on Haslam, throwing it off the glass to make the lead three. Following a Wade dunk and two Terry free throws, the Heat would have the ball down three with 6.7 seconds left. Wade would receive the inbound, almost losing it backcourt, but miraculously he would save it to Mike Miller for a last second shot over Chandler, but it would be an air ball. Time would expire with the Mavs taking game four to tie the series. 2-2. Dirk finished his flu game with 21 points, 10 coming in the fourth to tie up the series. Something you might notice is a little mention of LeBron. He was doing little to nothing in these fourth quarters. And in game four as a whole, he only had eight points. I repeat, eight points from LeBron James. What was dude doing? In every game besides game one, LeBron wasn't able to score more than two points in the fourth quarter. Marion had been the primary defender on him throughout the series, and it was definitely working. And with Marion slowing down LeBron, the Mavs were looking good going into Game 5. Before Game 5, Wade and LeBron were filmed entering the stadium mocking Dirk's illness. Oh, did y'all hear me call? I think I'm sick. <laughs> Weather is great. It's hard to go from 85 degree weather, man, go to 90. <laughs> Rihanna, man down. Looking back on this 13 years later, maybe they weren't fake coughing at all, but actually choking. I mean, LeBron was doing this already. But Wade? Had it gotten to him? Was this a sign of things to come? Throughout the game, the Heat were forced to play catch up with the Mavs, who were holding the lead most of the game. The Heat would finally have a four point lead with 437 left after a Wade three. But then Dirk would get Bosch in the air with an up fake to draw the foul and would hit both free throws, making him 43 of 44 from the line in the series as a whole. After turnovers from both sides, Haslam would find Bosch on the cut to the rim where he'd be fouled by Chandler and go one of two from the line, making it a three point lead. Terry then gets it to Dirk who would find every Heat defender not on the floor, ball watching, and find Jason Terry wide open for three to tie it. And then once again, the Heat would find themselves in a scoring drought. 
while the Mavs would continue to score with Dirk driving right by Bosch for the dunk. LeBron would continue to choke. Terry finds 0.16 for the three, which he drains. Bosch attacks and gets fouled once again, going one of two from the line once again. Now up four with 39 seconds left. Terry would ISO against LeBron and be forced to take a super tough contested three over him, which he would hit to put the Mavericks up seven, basically sealing the game. LeBron would finally score a layup to keep his 2.4th fourth quarter average alive. And after some kid and Terry free throws, the game was over. The Mavs were up 3-2. And once again, they had slowed down LeBron, forcing him to take jumpers. And as a whole, this game was probably the team's best all-around performance, with everyone doing their part. And now they just needed one more. The game was close in the first half, but the Mavs pulled away in the second half behind 18 second half points from Dirk. LeBron would finally have more than two points in the fourth, but it wasn't enough. And Dallas would win their first ever title. And as a whole, this might be the most impressive title run ever. And definitely one of the most impactful. This run changed the legacy of so many players. It continues to be the greatest stain on LeBron's legacy and the main reason many don't consider him the GOAT. It changed how everyone saw Dirk. He was the best player in the series. He showed up when it mattered most, when most doubted he could. And deservedly, he was named Finals MVP. And even alcoholic Jason Kidd in the twilight years of his career was a big part of the Mavs winning this series. And he got his one and only ring. And even though none of Dirk's teams would ever get out of the first round again, this run and his play were truly special. Cementing him as an all-time great, and one of the greatest power forwards to ever play the game. And that was the 2011 Dallas Mavericks, who pulled off the greatest Cinderella title run we've ever seen. And that concludes the video. If you enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe. I'm still a wee little channel, and all your likes and subscriptions go a long way to keep me putting out content. If you made it this far, I think you'll enjoy this video, wherever it is, about Kobe's last game before his Achilles injury. It was a classic, minus the Achilles injury part. But anyhow, love y'all. Hope y'all have a splendid rest of your day. And good night.